Okay, so I'm going to talk about complex frequency. Uh, this comes up at the end of your E and C course, and it's denoted by S. Uh, it's really, really important uh, for later on uh, in signals and systems, both and in circuit analysis, and it's good to just to get an understanding of exactly what it's all about. Okay, so S is usually denoted by something called sigma and plus J omega, right? Uh, so it's a complex number. Uh, J we know is equal to the square root of uh, negative one. Yeah. Um, so we have an imaginary component omega, and we have a real part sigma. Real and imaginary. Okay. The the good thing about complex frequency and the reason that it's used is that you can model pretty much any sinusoid with it. Uh, so as an example. Uh, let's just see how that's possible, right? So if you just look at e to the st, well, we know that that was equal to, we said that s was sigma plus j omega, right? So if we look at it, it's actually e sigma plus j omega t. And then we just distribute that t, and we get e sigma t plus j omega t. And we also know that from exponent laws, that's also equal to E sigma t times E j omega t. Yeah? So let's look at both of these terms here separately. So E to the sigma t, that just looks like a standard, well, a standard exponential graph, right? If sigma is actually less than zero, you're going to get something that's like, well, let's just say sigma is equal to negative one then you're going to get a graph that looks like this, right? You're going to get, when, e is, and when t is 0, you're going to get 1, and it's going to decay down. When sigma is greater than 0, you're going to end up with something that's, well, it's an increasing exponential. Yeah? So, oh, this actually, by the way, this would also just be like that on the other side of the, of the graph. Let's just make that a bit more obvious. And then when, back to this, so when, when sigma is actually greater than zero, you're going to get something that looks like this. Yeah? So you're getting these exponential functions. Okay? Then with e to the j omega t, well, we know that from Euler's formula, uh, which, uh, as a reminder, is e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine theta. Uh, so when you have omega t, well, you know, i is equal to j. Uh, sorry for the math mathematicians out there, the us electrical engineers, we're just going to make it j. Uh, cosine omega t plus I sine omega t. Well, this here, this e to the j omega t, is actually just a phasor uh, moving around the unit circle. So if you plotted on the imaginary axis and the real axis uh, as, well, omega is constant. If you plot it, well, t is a variable. And, on, and, and so if you plotted this out, you would get something that sort of moves around with time, yeah? And over time, if you plotted this like e to the j omega t, t, you end up with a sinusoid. Uh, obviously, if you take the real part, the real part, of g to the j omega t. And actually it's a cosine, so let's move that over. Yeah? So when you combine these two things together, like we did up here, and you combine them together, imagine if we combined something like this one with our sinusoid here. Well, we'd get something that scales the sinusoid downwards. So we'd end up with, if we had e sigma t times e j omega t, such that sigma was less than zero and omega was constant, 
than when we plotted them together on the axis. We'll end up with something that looks like this. Yeah, and you know, I'm just trying to say that this is the, the plotted part of, of this up here. And if you have sigma, hang on, let's copy that. Copy that, put it here. If we have sigma actually greater than zero, an omega constant again, we're gonna have something that starts off pretty normal and then gets really big. Uh, you know, increasing exponentially. So you can you can simulate with this. This would be something like something that simulates negative feedback. And this would be something that simulates positive feedback. You can also make sigma equal zero. Yeah? And this is this is essentially just alternating current. There's there's just no damping going on. There's nothing exponentially increasing or exponentially decreasing this. So this is S equals zero plus J omega, which means that S is equal to J omega. Now if we plot that, we said before, omega is constant. So we get E J omega T up here. Um, and then we get just a sinusoid. Obviously, this would only ever have a magnitude of one, but you can make this have some magnitude at the front, and we could just say that this is r, yeah. And then you have a sinusoid of magnitude r, and frequent and angular frequency omega. Uh, now, if you just wanted to to maybe model uh, an RC circuit, right? and you wanted to know what the frequency of this RC circuit was. You could also model that by saying that uh, the way that the voltage acts means that S is just equal to some sigma plus J zero, right? The voltage will, I think it dies off. Either way, it's exponential decay. Um, you know, the, the voltage will either die off or, well, it depends if you're actually taking the voltage source off of it or taking the, so let's just assume that we've opened a switch right off of a voltage source what will actually happen is that the voltage over this will decay over the over the capacitor it will let let out let out the voltage over its load yeah and we could model that with an s sig sigma plus j zero where s is just equal to sigma because we would just have e to the sigma t which is just some constant right it's just that same dying off uh, with the proportional to sigma. So you can see that we have the case where we just have we just have alternating current oh, alternating current or um, also called sinusoidal steady state or just sinusoidal um, we have exponential decay And we also have the in-betweens, right? We have this exponentially increasing sinusoid, and we have this exponentially decreasing sinusoid, or positive feedback and negative feedback. So it's really useful. Uh, it actually comes up a lot with, and that's why we transform things into the, the plus domain. So you might see later on, we do Laplace transforms of functions of time, and we turn them into functions of s, our complex frequency. And the reason we do that is you can just model pretty much most things that we need to with s. And uh, hopefully that sort of clears up why you'll be using s to model in circuits instead of just j omega. Okay.